If you're trying to decide what breed of sheep to bring to your homestead or farm and you're not quite sure between meat sheep and dairy sheep, in this video I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each so you can make the best decision for you. I'm Natalie Lucier from Waykeeper Farm and Nerdery and I want to first dispel a couple of myths when it comes to sheep breeds. So first of all, you can milk any type of sheep and you can eat any type of sheep. I know that sounds crazy and we all hear about the different types of breeds and which ones are better for each. And that's because yes, some breeds have been really genetically chosen to be better at one thing or another. And so for example, some milking breeds will produce so much more milk that it's really worth choosing a milking breed versus another type of breed. But you could still milk them. You just might not get a whole lot of milk out of a meat breed of sheep. And the same goes for types of meat. You can absolutely eat eat the lambs of your dairy sheep and they will taste just as good and this really just comes down to what they're bred for and what traits you're looking for. So let's get into it and all the different types of breeds and things you should consider before you decide whether to bring one type of sheep to your farm or maybe more than one. Let's quickly run through some of the most popular types of meat sheep breeds. First, we have the Suffolk, which is a fast growing breed. The Katahdin, which is a really popular hair sheep, which means no wool, you do not have to shear them. And they're also very hardy. Then we have the Icelandic, which is also a pretty good triple purpose breed that can handle poor pasture and that's very hardy. Then we have the Dorper, which is a fast growing breed that tends to shed if it's very hot or put on more coats if it is cold. And they tend to be a little bit less parasite resistant. Then there's the Texel, which is a fast growing breed that can handle colder climates and tends to be leaner meat. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list. There are so many types of sheep breeds and a lot of them are specific to meat. So there's American black belly, there's so many others that you can definitely research. But I think it's good to focus on some of the important traits that you might be looking for in a meat sheep. When it comes to dairy sheep, I have a whole other video that goes into depth on the different types of dairy breeds there are. But just to give you a quick recap, you've got the East Frisians, the Lacone, and the British milking sheep. Those tend to be the top three dairy breeds that people choose specifically to raise for milk. Now, like I said in the beginning, there are some meat breeds that can be triple purpose and would be great at also milking, but you just might not get as much as these breeds that I just talked about that are specifically for dairy. Now let's talk about the benefits of choosing a specific dairy breed sheep for your farm or homestead. Milking breeds are triple purpose. They can do milk, meat, and wool. And if you want dairy every year, then you'll definitely be breeding your ewes yearly, which means you'll always have lambs on hand. And because dairy sheep are bred to produce so much milk, there's always going to be plenty of milk for their lambs, and they tend to grow way faster as a result. We have lambs that can grow so fast in just three months that it's kind of ridiculous. And because of that, you could potentially butcher lambs a little bit sooner or save on other feed as well. The other thing that tends to be pretty popular in dairy sheep breeds is that the ewes will produce more than one lamb. They tend to be multiples like twins, triplets, or even quadruplets. And that is also a great thing if you want to have a lot of lambs to butcher. Now let's talk about the downsides of dairy breeds. So first of all, most dairy breeds are woolly, which means that you will need to shear them at least once a year, depending on where you live, versus meat sheep, which do have hair types of breeds where you don't have to shear at all. Another downside to dairy breeds is that they tend to be a little bit less hardy and require higher nutritional needs. And that's because dairy breeds have been bred over generations to produce so much milk that they need that nutrition in order to produce. And that means you need the best hay you can find, the best pasture you can find. You might need grains and other types of supplements and that can add up to cost. So that's something to really think about if you're not sure if you can provide all of those things for your sheep on a regular basis. Another downside to dairy sheep is that Milking takes time and it is a commitment that you have to do every day during milking season. So make sure you know if you want to actually do this on a regular basis or not. And finally, I think another downside of dairy sheep is that they can be harder to find and they could also be more expensive to source. So there are tons of places where you can buy sheep from, but most of them are not going to be specific dairy sheep. And if you want really good quality dairy sheep from good stock, then that will also cost a little bit more or you might need to ship them from further away. Now let's talk about the benefits of choosing a meat specific type of breed. So first of all, some of them are not wool sheep. So if you also want wool, then you've got 
got tons of options to choose from for both dairy and meat sheep, but if you don't want the extra hassle of shearing, then definitely search for a hair breed of sheep. Another benefit of choosing meat specific breeds is that there tends to be a lot more types of breeds to choose from, and you might be able to find one that's more adapted to your climate and your location, and even be able to find them locally. So that just makes the whole thing easier. Another benefit to meat specific sheep breeds is that they tend to be bred for hardiness and also for being able to handle poor pasture sometimes. And so that means that you don't have to bring in so many inputs to really support your sheep. And also there tends to be maybe more parasite resistance and you might have just an easier time keeping your sheep healthy and in good condition without a ton of extra inputs and supplementation. Although you may still need to have some, but at the same time, it's not as high as for dairy sheep. Some sheep producers will tell you that meat breeds are better when it comes to the final meat product and meat taste. Now, personally, I haven't done any side-by-side -side comparisons comparing meat breed lamb versus dairy breed lamb, but I think they probably both taste pretty good. And we've been very happy with all of the meat that we've eaten from the lambs that we raised that are all dairy sheep breeds. Now, the downside of choosing a meat breed is that you don't get the milk. And yes, like I mentioned, there are some breeds that you could get some milk from, you just might not get enough enough and you might realize that it's not quite worth the effort to be milking if you're not getting as much milk as with a dairy breed. But that could be a pro also depending on what you're looking for. Now if you want dairy sheep and you also want meat sheep, does it make sense to have both types of breeds on your farm? And I think the answer is yes. There are definitely people who have multiple breeds of sheep on their farms or their homesteads and depending on how big of an operation you want to have, that makes total sense. Now if you are a small homestead or a small farm like we are, we decide to just go with dairy sheep and that has worked out really well for us. Now, that being said, there are great efforts trying to have really, truly triple purpose types of breeds on the way. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, there's definitely all kinds of groups and other places you can search online for more sheep information. And if you want more information about specific dairy breeds, make sure to watch my next video right here.